Most people don't realize that Switzerland is actually a federation, a collection of 26 states called cantons. As such, most people have no idea what sets them apart and what makes them alike. The canton of Schwitz is such an example. Covered in forests and breathtaking mountains and flanked by two beautiful lakes, the canton of Schwitz is a heaven on earth. There is so much to know about this canton, so let's uncover some facts about it. Hello, and welcome to 7 Facts. The canton of Schwitz is located in central Switzerland, with Lake Zurich in the north, Lake Lucerne in the west, and the Alps in the south. It's roughly half the size of London, and is home to only 150,000 people. It is though an important place for Switzerland. It's where the country gets its name, flag, and basically its existence from. The name Switzerland comes from the name of this canton. The earliest seeds for a united country of Switzerland were laid in 1291, when the canton of Schwitz, Uri, and Unterwalden came together and formed a pact to form the Swiss Confederation. This confederation expanded to include a total of 13 cantons by the 16th century. The charter was intended to ensure legal certainty against the powerful House of Habsburg on July 15, 1291. The first two paragraphs commit all three communities to the joint defense of the three valleys. This document is still on display at the Museum of the Swiss Charters of Confederation in the town of Schwitz. Before we get to the next fact, I'd like to ask you one thing. This video isn't sponsored, none of them are so far, so perhaps you'd consider supporting this channel by becoming a patron. If you still enjoy my content, go visit my Patreon page and help this channel out. Right, with that said, let's go to fact number 3. The toponym Schwitz itself was first attested in 972 AD as Old High German Suites, ultimately perhaps related to Old Norse Svida, which means to burn, referring to the area of forest that was burned and cleared to build. Another popular theory is that the name actually comes from a legendary national hero called Sweeter or Suito. But when this term started to be used to refer to the entire region covered under the old Swiss Confederacy, the masses didn't really like this name. So why did it stick? Well, that's because of an interesting turn of events. During the Swabian War of 1499, the Swabians started abusing the Swiss by calling them Schweizer. After 1499, the people proudly found an identity with the name and adopted it as their own, along with the term Confederate. The flag of Switzerland too comes from this canton. There is a lot of debate on the origin of the cross and the red background in the Swiss flag. The most widely accepted explanation is that the Swiss flag has been derived directly from the coat of arms of the canton of Schwitz. The flag of Schwitz too used to be solid red in the early 15th century. Sometime during that period, a symmetrical white cross appeared on the flag. Over the centuries, it underwent a lot of transformation, but the cross and the red background have remained through all this time. The almighty, worldwide famed Swiss army knife is produced in the canton of Schwitz. Originating in the village of Ibach, the Swiss army knife was first produced in 1891 after the company, Karl Elsener, which later became Victor Inox, won the contract to produce the Swiss army's knife from the previous German manufacturer. Officially designated as the Offizier Messer, or Officer's Knife, the term Swiss Army Knife was coined by American soldiers after World War II due to the difficulty they had in pronouncing the German name. Up to 2005, there was another company, Wenger, that used to make them, but they were bought by Victorinox. While this wasn't the first multi-use pocket knife, it was the first with tools attached on both sides of the handle. The small town of Schwitz is the capital of this canton. The town of 15,000 people is one of the most prosperous, most beautiful and most historically important in Swiss history. The Museum of the Swiss Charters houses the most important documents of the early Swiss Confederacy, including the Confederation's founding document of 1291. 
This is a quiet town with marvelous centuries-old buildings. At the same time, it's the canton's main urban and administrative center. So you get to enjoy all the peace and quiet you want, while at the same time having access to everything modern cities have to offer. Today, Schwitz is a very prosperous region, but that wasn't always the case. And this prosperity came at a cost. The poverty of the canton forced its men to serve as soldiers in the neighboring country's armies after the 16th century. These soldiers quickly gained a solid reputation for their bravery and gallantry. They frequently returned home wealthy and in a position to build the proud houses, which to this day are a feature of the town of Schwitz. This gradually helped the canton lift itself out of poverty. Nowadays, the canton's economy is booming. There is a thriving industry and finding a job or even starting a business is easy in this canton. Crime rates are very low, the surrounding landscape is breathtaking and well taken care of. This means that the canton of Schwitz provides a well-rounded lifestyle to its citizens, making it one of the top regions of Europe with the highest quality of life. Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy this content. Leave your comments downstairs and don't forget there's a Patreon page where you can support this channel. I hope to see you next time. Bye.